Hello everybody, welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, so all the time in the comments, we get these conspiracy theories for and, what's gonna crash the housing market. And we're totally on board with you. We like them. Yes. So we, we the latest one we got was that the institutional buyers are all, you know, they're just gonna have to fire sale the houses because they all have adjustable rate loans and loans are too expensive for them and now they can't afford the houses. So we went and did some research. Yes. And we found this article from Forbes. Yes. Institutional firms are pulling back from the U.S. housing market. Just look at Starwood's decision to shop 2,000 single-family rentals. Shop means to sell. Mm -hmm. It's just another word for selling. Okay. So let's first talk about this. I buyers have been buying, institutional buyers, mm -hmm. have been buying for over a decade. Yes. They own... A lot of houses. They do. Um, you know, and there are some big ones. I mean, there are institutional buyers that own tens of thousands of houses. So, uh, meaning like a single one will own tens of thousands of houses. So, they are big players in the housing market. Uh, that's not to say, you know, when you consider the whole nation, not maybe not that big, but certainly um, just having that many houses in the hands of. Uh, a few people that are controlling these companies is very interesting. So we've got two of the large ones. Now this company that sold that's selling two thousand, they only have three thousand. Mm -hmm. So they're selling two thirds of their portfolio. So you say, oh, but what if everybody else is doing that? So we took two of the larger ones that we got data for. Right. And we're well, going to show you the data here pretty soon. The charts. We have four charts. They're really good. Right. So part of the reason that this company that has three thousand homes is selling two thousand of them is because they are also heavily invested in commercial real estate and they also have investors that have wanted their money back. So in order to give their investors their money back, they have to liquidate some assets, which is not atypical. Um, I think this is more a reflection of what their investors want as far as getting their money out, not necessarily what these um, money managers believe about real estate. So let me explain kind of what Juan is talking about. Some, there's two kinds of funds. One is your traditional REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust, where they invest in commercial assets and shopping malls, office space, you know, retail, industrial, things like that. Mm -hmm. And they pull in all this money and they invest in these assets. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that if the investors say, hey, look, I want to cash out some of my money, they either have to have cash flow from the properties to do it, or they have to start selling assets mm -hmm. to do it. They have to give, and usually there's a percent. Like they say, hey, we will only give back 5% of the whole fund per year. So if more than 5%, then you just get a prorated portion. Mm -hmm. If you say, hey, I want a million bucks back, they can say, oh, we can only give you 650 because you know, other people are trying to get money back too, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so that's a one kind of firm. Some of those did buy, like the Starwood bought 3,000 houses. Mm -hmm. They're selling those because they need to subsidize the ones that are not doing, they're not performing. Right. And in order to return money to their investors. Okay. Then the other type, they're predominantly just buying houses. Mm -hmm. So they could have the problem if people say well, they want their money back. They could have to sell. So here's a quote from the article. First glance, one might assume Wall Street types would pull back from commercial real estate space where office values are sinking fast and instead pile into the residential housing market where national home values are rising again after passing through a mild home price correction last fall, just like we said a year ago mm -hmm. that would happen. Okay, so Juana, what's your prediction? Because we have four charts we're going to show them. They tell the story. They're the two of the largest. They have between them, like tens of thousands of homes. What's, Correct. What do you think is going on? Well, personally, I believe that they are simply shedding non-performing assets. So let's say that you're, you have a stock portfolio. Let's say that you own 10 stocks and you take a look at your 10 stocks and you say, you know what, uh, these, fives are, these five are doing great. These four are doing okay. This one over here, it's a dog. It's gotta go. So, you know, so you're gonna go ahead and sell it. Well, it's the same thing with these guys. They're looking at their portfolios and they're saying, okay, all these are okay. So maybe this particular market or maybe just these particular houses in this particular neighborhood, you know, th those weren't the best choice for us or they don't fit what we're trying to accomplish with the portfolio. And so they will shed some of those assets in order to um, 
really adjust their portfolio to better fit what they're trying to accomplish. Okay, so here's the first one, Invitation Homes. Uh, Invitation Homes bought one of our listings. Yes, they did. Uh, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. um, cash, uh, it was mm -hmm. cash. Now, I don't know where they got the cash from. Maybe they got uh, uh, financed some of it okay, so, previously. Okay, but remember, when, uh, when these companies are purchasing these homes cash, they're not mortgaging individual properties, yeah. right? Uh, they're getting a loan and they're buying lots of homes with that loan. So it's a little more complicated than any single property. Or they have a, f a hedge fund. Or they have a line of credit so that there, yeah. are other, there are other options for them. Okay, so this represents the purchasing of invitation homes. They have 83,000 single family homes. Mm -hmm. Now the green is homes bought per quarter. And then the gray is home sold per quarter. Now, the next chart will show you the number, so you'll be able to see that. Mm -hmm. As you can see, they were in a buying frenzy in 2021. Uh, they were still selling some houses, mm -hmm. non-performing assets, but they were buying like crazy. Uh, home prices were going up, and member interest rates were still crazy low. Mm -hmm. So they were able to acquire cash pretty cheaply. But as you can see, mortgage rate shock over there on the right, and then the numbers dropped, and in the uh, first quarter of 2023, they only bought 190 for homes nationwide. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the next chart. This is how many. This is the same chart, but now you can see how many they sold. So you can see that they are selling less homes than they were selling in 2020 uh, first quarter. But then you can see even in 2021, they were still selling you know 100, 200 homes mm -hmm. every quarter while they were also buying other houses. Mm -hmm. They were just rebalancing for for whatever reason. So you can see that they're 219. It's not like they're going to dump 30,000 houses. That's the, the 219. We figured this out. It's like, what was the percentage? Like 0.1 something percent. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, against their 80,000 plus homes, it's nothing. Yeah. It, it's it, nothing. it doesn't even register. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't compute. Okay. Here's the next one. American homes for rent. They own 58,000 houses. Uh, as you can see, they, they, they're following the same pattern. They did uh, buy a lot of homes, 2021, and then you can see that they've bought less in uh, 2023. So, but they did, they're still buying homes. They are still buying homes. Right, they homes. didn't just disappear. And right. when people say, yeah, but look at those homes, they, remember, this is included in the inventory that we've been showing you on charts, uh, their sales. I'll go to the next chart. So it was mine. They sold 666 of their, you know, 58,000. So basically 1%. Uh, yeah. They sold 1% of their homes, but they were still acquiring homes mm -hmm. too. So, uh, which is not enough to move the needle. And that's the whole country, 666, like a two in each market, mm -hmm. right? Two or three in each market. Um, so not a substantial number there. But what you're noticing is that. You know, these companies are hanging on to literally tens of thousands of homes. And we're just giving you examples of a couple of companies. And there are lots of them, uh, more than, than, than you and I can count at this point. And, and they're not easily um, observed because of the way um, they are set up, because of the way these uh, properties are titled. They're titled in multiple LLCs, even in the same market. So it's very difficult to... You know, without them disclosing, it's very difficult for us to say, okay, this company owns this many and that company owns that many. So it's very difficult. So that's why this article was very interesting to us because now we've got, um, you know, some, some good data about some big players and what they're doing under the, the present market conditions. Now, it's possible that a couple scenarios with these sales, one is that they just bulk sold 500 to some other company. They just said, hey, we'll give you 500 properties. Here they are. Give us this much money. Mm -hmm. They're all yours. They signed a piece of paper, the, the um, ownership transferred. It's also po it's, it's not likely, but it's possible that they hired 666 real estate agents and said, sell these houses for us. It they is they didn't call us. They called other people. Okay. They used to call us. The banks used to call us. Mm -hmm. We used to do... Six seven hundred a year, mm -hmm. in just in Vegas, bank owned home sales. So, um, but the bottom line is, it doesn't look like 
Uh, and even here's the other thing that, that was mentioned in the article. They're predicting potentially as much as a 15% peak to trough from the peak to the bottom. But the problem is, is home prices are going up now. So this idea that they peaked and they went down, but now they're going back up. They're saying anywhere from five to 15%. Mm -hmm. But even knowing that, that the home prices could fall five to 15% wanna, they're not like dumping all their houses. No, so remember real estate is a long game. It's not day trading like it is with stocks. So these companies do understand that the cost in and out of a transaction is real, it's high, and it's not worth playing around with. When they are rebalancing their portfolios, they are for a greater purpose and uh, you know they are willing to incur that cost. So it is very important to note that. And also, you know, these are numbers that they're expecting in the markets that they are um, that they own property. Uh, there are prop there are markets in which they don't own property. There are pro markets uh, that will even within the markets that, that they do own property that will have a different experience. I see it all the time in your comments. Uh, you know, telling me that hey, uh, you know, homes went up uh, two hundred thousand dollars in the last couple months in, in my neighborhood. Homes went up $100,000 since the beginning of the year in my neighborhood. You know, whatever's going on. So we do see that. Uh, so remember, real estate is really hyper-local and these guys own real estate across many markets. And so they're trying to rebalance all this. So maybe they are selling properties in markets that they see uh, will have less appreciation for the, for the duration that they're planning to hang on the property. Because remember, they're looking at cash flow and appreciation. So if they think that, hey, these properties in this particular market are not going to appreciate as much, they may choose to go ahead and let go of those and purchase properties in a market that they believe will appreciate more. So it's a matter of how they want their capital put to work. Yeah, it's and that's the important thing that they are still buying, mm -hmm. like Juan has said. If they feel there's another market that is better. Jacksonville, Florida, maybe. Oh, you know, we, we underbought here. We should buy some more. This is a really strong potential. They need to sell some assets to get some money to go buy in those things, even with the transaction costs in and out. They right. just are finding out, you know, it's it's different. Like when, you know, people try to, uh, you know, compare the real estate to the stock market, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I'm going to buy high and sell low or buy low and sell high. It doesn't really work that way because you know, it does take a while. There are costs going in and out. Mm -hmm. You can't just instantly get your money. Right. You can, it's a, I, you know, you can, and you could say, sell this, buy this instantaneously. And, you know, on any trading stock trading platform, right. but real estate, it doesn't really work that way. No, nope. it's a, it's a much longer and expensive process. Yeah. So what do you think? What's happening in your market? Tell us what's happening in your market. Tell us where you're watching from. Uh, please remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell. If this was fun and interesting, uh, we're glad. Please leave us uh, a comment. Please be nice to one another in the comments. Uh, share the video, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.